Greetings, pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. I wanted to share with you guys today a trick for using the stencil tool here inside of Painter. Now, as you can see, I've been working on this uh, holographic table projection thing for our upcoming effect. And, of course, you know me. I can't just throw a simple box in a scene and make it work. I have to make a, a fancy table to show you. <laughs> so, what I have been working on here very closely is uh, this is some trim that I designed. And using Photoshop, I, I'll show you, using Photoshop, I built just a black and white outline in order to build this trim. And I was able to bring it into Painter here and use it as a stencil or a guide in order to paint both height map material and texture color material. Now, you'll notice if I zoom out on my texture here a little bit, there we are. And we can move the light around so we can see it a little bit better. Let's uh, try and find a good spot. I guess that's pretty good. So if we open up the sides, we'll come back to the top in a moment. Open up the sides, I have this thing called trim. I open up trim and I have two different layers here. I have a height layer and I can turn that on and off and you can see the change occurring here. And then I have the trim color. So I actually colored the trim. Now by default, or by default the way I've been working, it may, may not be the best. Let me know if you have a better tip. I wanna make the best possible workflow for this because it's a great tool. What I've been doing here is I will create a new layer. So originally it was this trim height and I brought in the stencil and here you can load the stencil here. This is my trim, load the stencil and here's what it looks like. So as you rotate the scene here, of course, you can just have a stencil and then paint down. Think of it like uh, any kind of stencil you've ever used uh, spray paint for. You know, you put it where you want it and then you have what you get. But it also works here in the 2D view. So what I did here was if I expand this over a little bit so you can see a bit easier. I just took this and kept working it until I got it lined up. Got it lined up perfectly, which is pretty close, but I'll try and show you. Got it lined up like this, and then I was able to just paint directly in here and it shows up on the model. Now the way I did this was down here in, in the uh, material, I turned on height and I turned off everything else. And I set my height up to, I think, 4.4. So then when I paint it, I'm getting just the height. And the reason I did this in two separate layers instead of combining them, because you can just turn on the color here as well. The problem with that is the color is sort of baked in and this is one layer by itself in the stack and you can't really have two separate adjustments. So what I've done is I have one that was just for the height and that's this one here. And then without moving anything, leaving the stencil right where it is, I just created a new layer, a color layer, and I went and painted the color. So now with the color, if I turn off the stencil for a moment, it'll be easier to see. So now that they're in two separate layers, I have control over the color independently of the height. And I can turn one or the other off. And you'll notice on the top here, here we'll go back to the top, and I'll show you how the stencil works in a moment. Uh, the reason that this dual layer approach I think is better is on the top, if I collapse the sides, open up the top, You'll see this panel three if I hide and unhide that. I created this by not following my own advice in order to show you the difference. So this was created using a stencil and then I painted it with both height and color turned on. And what that did was, it did give me the detail I was looking for. It looks like this nice little inset into the design, but now it's permanent. It's one layer and I can't affect both. So I think that the two layer approach is better. And that's my opinion, that's my workflow so far. I'm still learning this, so tell me what you think and we'll come up with a better solution together. But for now, let's add another panel here so I can show you how the stencil works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click a new layer. And let's call this panel tutorial, okay? And now over in our resource area, you see it says stencil, no resource selected. So I'm gonna take this panel and just drag it over here and drop it. And now it shows my stencil on the screen and I can move this around anywhere I want or I can move around anywhere in here. And it's in here is what I'm gonna choose. So let's zoom in pretty closely. I'm actually going to expand the 2D view for now. Zoom in really closely and you'll notice this line here, that's where it wraps around the bottom so I have to go above that line. So this is pretty good in between my two panel lines. I like that. Now you'll notice my stencil here is a panel with four screws already built in. 
and this was early on in my testing and now I just kind of use this just as a full panel. So I'm going to go ahead and create my second layer here just because I know I'm going to need it in a second. Let's call this, let's call this panel 4 and panel 4 this will be the color and I'll actually just rename this panel 4. So we're going to focus on one at a time so I'm going to turn off color and the height I want to be 0.2 that's what I've been doing for these panels and we're on height I'm going to say you only affect height there we go so now all you have to do is paint but keep in mind you'll see that it's repeating it repeats automatically I have not found a way to turn that off necessarily uh, so I lower my brush when I'm doing the edges so I don't interfere with the sides and now we just click and drag and you'll see as I drag and go back and forth I'm creating this detail and you can see it occurring on the left there in the uh, 3D view. So let's go all the way to the end here and just get the corners meshed out. Perfect. Here we go. Okay. Now that the corners are all meshed out, I don't have to worry about it so much. And you can always, I'm clicking and holding, but you can click and then click and stop and click. It doesn't really matter. So now I can make my brush a bit bigger without fearing of hitting the sides of something else. Let's fill in the middle. It's being difficult here. Let's go. Come on, fill it in. I've done about eight of these trying different setups, different things I like this morning, and uh, this one seems to be working pretty well. Make sure those lines are nice and crisp. This should be a machined product. There we go. Now, is what I was talking about. Without moving any of this, I'm going to go to my color, set you to base color, I'm going to turn off height and turn on color. And this is the value I've been using. And now I just paint. And this is going to do the same thing. It's only painting inside my stencil, which is perfect. Again, like a fill option would be nice. Uh, I don't know if there is such a thing. I'll, I'm going to keep looking here. It's the first that I've really played around with this feature and it's amazing. I used to be able to paint inside Quixel Suite. You could actually go into Photoshop and they had some pretty sophisticated tools to create uh, normal map details without having to actually paint the normal map. Or I'm sorry, without having to actually model the normal map, you could paint it instead. And that was extremely helpful. All right, so here we are, almost done. Okay, that looks pretty good. Gotta make sure I get it all before we uh, leave the stencil. Looks pretty good. Let's bring back the 3D view. There we go. So now, I'm gonna turn off the stencil just so we can see the screen a bit better. We have our panel. And, more importantly, this panel looks really nice next to the other one. I don't wanna put too many panels in a row. You know, put a couple here, one here, maybe a few on the other side. We can add extra details on top of this. And more importantly, I have access to both pieces of information independently. So I could just do color if I want it to be just a painted area. Or I can take this color and I can start to change it. So I can say, now multiply the color. So now I can change it up without having to change anything else, without having to repaint it. Color dodge. I think my favorite was either screen or an overlay. Let's see. I think it was the screen. I did like the lighter. And I still have adjustment to the actual value. So I can even change how much. So tweak and push and pull as you like, and you can create all kinds of things. So this is the same way that I created this trim, same way that I created the panel lines, which I'll probably have to redo the panel lines because I did those before I thought to do the uh, leaving the stencil in place to then paint, because I would like to paint those kind of darker. So I might redo those, no big deal, it's really quick. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you're enjoying how this table is coming along. Uh, we have the holographic effect coming along very nicely and uh, I'll have that for you very soon. So as always guys, uh, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.